Not long ago, Relativity announced a significant revamp of practically the entire Terranar program. This came with a new design, plan, and even launch dates. These changes are meant to increase the rocket's performance and decrease the cost and time it takes to launch. Now in the middle of 2023, they have made decent progress on this next generation launch vehicle. In the last few days, we received more information regarding what teams at Relativity have been developing and worked toward the first full ENR engine test, a milestone that has been a long time in the making. With Terran 1 now on the back burner, practically all of Relativity's focus is on Terran R and getting this vehicle to orbit. As a partially reusable heavy lift launch vehicle, it will not be easy, but teams at Relativity are confident in the design and path of this rocket. Here I'll go more in depth into the recent progress, some of the changes made to Terran R, what to expect in the coming weeks, and more. After the first launch of Terran 1, we saw somewhat of a break from the company as significant developments and general updates slowed down. In regard to this, only a few days ago in the first, Relativity CEO Tim Ellis tweeted saying, Been pretty heads down and busy after launch. Now working on our next phase of development and setting the stage for Terran R. Some solid development progress by the team. Hardware continuing to ramp up, especially now with complete focus on a singular product to deliver our $1.65 billion in growing in contracts across seven signed customers. I just walked by Eon R Engine Chamber 009 today. When he says they have complete focus on a singular product, he's referring to the fact that despite only ever being launched once, Terran 1 is now retired. It's likely we will never see this launch vehicle lift off again. This is because the vehicle was meant to test the 3D printing process, among other areas, to see if the idea was viable. With the nearly successful first test flight, Relativity decided they could absolutely pursue this path, but would rather do it with a larger and partially reusable rocket. As mentioned in the tweet, Relativity's signed customer backlog is around $1.65 billion in launch service agreements, or LSAs, and an additional several billion dollars in active customer LSA dialogue. This funding is crucial to the program and gives the company the resources necessary to continue. Terranar's first stage will be outfitted with 13 3D printed gas generator cycle ENR lock slash methane rocket engines, each capable of 258,000 pound force of sea level thrust while its second stage houses a single lock slash methane eon vac engine with 279,000 pound force of vacuum thrust. These engines benefit from Relativity's advanced experience developing gas generator engines and vehicle stages with the oxygen slash methane propellant combination. As far as progress, days ago when asked about the eon R and whether or not the company was on track for a full engine static fire this year, Tim Ellis responded, yes, it's tracking. Since mid-2022, Relativity has been underway testing all EONR combustion devices at NASA Stennis Space Center, including the main thrust chamber assembly, or TCA, gas generator, or GG, and gas-gas ignition system at full scale and 100% power with high combustion efficiency. All engine active valves are developed in-house, with all valves produced, successfully actuated, and in development testing. In February 2023, the company completed its first full build of an EONR engine. Now we're not far away from the first full static fire. The engine composition on the first stage is comprised of four outer fixed engines aligned underneath four landing legs, and nine center gimbaled engines, providing enhanced reliability on vehicle ascent with engine out capability. On both Terranar stages, the LOX propellant tanks are forward of the methane tanks, separated by a printed common dome. Subcooled cryogenic propellants are used on all parts of the vehicle except for the first stage liquid oxygen system, where subcooling is not necessary to meet performance goals. It's important to point out that EONR benefits from the heritage of its smaller predecessor, EON-1, which is used on board Relativity's Terran-1 rocket. Migrating many of the same thoughtful propulsion system architecture decisions from EON-1 to EONR has unlocked a high rate of iterative design and fast-tracked much of the EONR test program. Initially, Relativity was advertising that the first launch of Terranar would be in 2024. Even with the previous design, this was an extremely ambitious launch date and didn't seem possible. This being said, with the announcement of a new rocket design and plan, they also released a new launch date of 2026. Based on the company's current progress and the work that still needs to be completed, this is a realistic time frame that they could very well achieve. One of the biggest threats to this rocket's future, and the timeline in particular, is the challenges of building such a complex rocket. Reusability alone, for example, is by no means easy to develop, test, and execute successfully. With this in mind, instead of Terran R being fully reusable as previously planned, the new design only features a reusable first stage. This will still present some challenges, but it's much more doable going from an expendable rocket to a partially reusable one, rather than all the way to fully reusable. Specifically, Terran R will feature two near body length aero strikes, four unique slider mechanism landing legs, and four printed actuating grid fins. 
These features are meant to optimize for stage reusability, enabling rapidly scaled launch cadence for customers together with greater payload to orbit and lower costs versus other reusable architectures. In a statement, the company said, Terranar's innovative first stage architecture allows for a high angle of attack reentry, which reduces propellant required for reentry burns, aerodynamic design for better reentry stability and improved control authority, and a passively actuated landing leg deployment system, which is elegantly simple, lightweight, and highly operable for rapid reuse. An 18 foot or 5.5 meter vehicle diameter also aids vehicle stability with lower requirements on landing legs. Terranar will have an electromechanical actuator based engine thrust vector control system and also uses EMAs for grid fin control, in addition to in-house developed avionics and flight software. Additionally, the vehicle features a re-entry heat shield on the aft end designed for rapid reusability, they said. The company points out that from day one, Terranar was intentionally designed for reusability. They intend to design major parts of the vehicle for 20 reuses right away, with strategic development of reusability criteria and rapid learning from flight data to continuously improve through successive vehicle block upgrades. Focusing on their customers' needs for urgent, disruptive, relevant, and diversified launch supply in the medium to heavy payload market, they chose to prioritize optimizing for first stage reuse initially. Each early flight of Terranar will seek to deliver customer payloads to orbit reliably. Then, after vehicle ascent, Max-Q, MECO, stage separation, and second stage ignition, with the customer payload well on its way to orbit, the first stage will begin its entry, landing, and reuse journey. Shortly after stage separation, the first stage of Terranar will perform a slow flip maneuver using its Cold Gas Reaction Control System, or RCS. Grid fins deploy, followed by igniting engines to complete entry burns, slowing velocity and reducing peak loads and heating. Vehicle aero surfaces and strakes are designed to reduce the payload penalty for reuse with less propellant used on entry burns. In addition, unique aerodynamic features result in a more stable entry profile with controlled flow separation around the vehicle. Terranar is designed for atmospheric entry with grid fin control. The vehicle will then ignite engines for a landing burn and command the leg slider mechanism to open, which will then passively deploy with the aid of aerodynamics. The first stage will then touch down on a downrange ship in the ocean. Once the first stage has completed its reentry, it will go for inspection, refurbishment, and recertification for its next flight from Cape Canaveral. Based on all this information, in the next few years, we can expect developments on an ocean landing platform and this overall system, all of which are necessary in order to reuse such a large first stage after payload deployment. Relativity has very big plans for Terran R in its future. In the time since the first launch of Terran 1, the company has been focusing on the next generation launch vehicle and its engines in particular. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.